Hey guys, Nabil here. Uh, I have a very special guest with me today. You probably have seen him before. It's none other than the writer of the last Blade series or comic series, Hayden Robble. Hayden, thank you so much for being with us here again. Second time. Thanks a lot for accepting the invitation. Thanks for inviting me. I'm, I'm just excited, obviously, to talk more with you, Nabil. And uh, I said it before we joined the call, obviously, but congratulations again on 20K subs. It's a huge deal. It's it's crazy to see how much this channel has grown. It's all been you, man. It's all it's all been your hard work. So I really appreciate. It. I think as a, as a fan of SNK myself, I, I'm really appreciative of all the hard work you put in to the channel. Thank you, thank you so much for for, for the kind words. And and uh, you know, if you guys you know haven't you haven't seen this, the the other video before, I, I actually uh, spoke to Hayden before when the uh, Last Blade comic series was just started. Obviously, we couldn't get into the story details. It was more of how it came to be, and a pretty exciting story that you should definitely should check out if you haven't done so. And now, Last Blade has completed its first season, and in fact, the second season just started a couple weeks ago. So. Today, we're going to talk about the story of the first season. We're going to recap things a little bit. We're going to talk about the second season. And we'll talk about a lot of things related to the comics. And if you have not checked the comics yet, you're really missing out. The link is in the description. It's on Tapas. It's it's releasing weekly. Uh, and it's just been an amazing experience for me as an SNK fan. So, Hayden, how's 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 it how's it going? Like, how are you how are you guys doing right now with the with the comic? Uh, where at what part is is the, the the entire season two been written? Are you still writing the story? Where are you at right now? So, in terms of production, we're pretty far in. We're we're nearly complete at this point. Uh, we're we're essentially wrapping up the final few episodes. Uh, and and from a writing perspective, we're completely done. So the writing, uh, in terms of the this season, we're, the, is is finished up and wrapped up. And it's really just exciting to see all these loose threads that we've been, you know, slowly piecemealing uh, in the mysteries uh, of the entire, you know, Last Blade uh, fiction being tied up in uh, in terms of season one right now. So really exciting. Uh, the artwork is obviously getting better and better. And I hope that's one of the the biggest hopes I have when people check out these later episodes. I think they'd be really impressed to see just the graduation of the style just getting better and better and more polished as we got into deeper and deeper episodes uh so yeah it's been it's been just a really uh, amazing experience as usual and big shout outs to uh our team cocoon productions who's doing the art and also our colors uh dojo goopser and uh, also alex schooling the letterer the list goes on and on uh and shout out of course to uh coloring assistant lulu uh all of these people are making this happen and we're really you know uh really impressed actually with just again, the reception that the fans have been having so far to the comic. I mean, it's it, adapting the last blade, and as I said, I believe we said this in the previous previous episode, previous um, you know talk we had, is that is is no easy task. It's one of those uh, you know SNK series of you know all like great plot and a lot of details, and and last blade takes that to another level. Like you know, it really feels complicated when you just read the wikis and stuff. So trying to <laughs> yeah. make a story out of that, and, and you guys succeeded because it's, it's a quite a coherent story that you could easily follow. A lot of a lot of characters showed up in the first season, so it's, it's really a job well done. And I can't wait to see where where the story goes. And speaking of art, you're, you're talking about art, and I actually noticed that the first season there were a lot of more of like uh, kind of like uh, you know funny uh, you know like uh, not not SD format, but like you know like those. Uh, uh, drawing show, you know, putting these characters in funny, funny uh, situations. It's right. getting le- it's getting more and more serious now, and it, it really shows in the art. Looking at the last few um, episodes of of season two, so this was this was a deliberate thing from the beginning, or is it something that you guys changed as you went through the writing process of the of the series? So, from a writing perspective and story perspective, uh, first of all, thank you for all the kind words. Uh, hearing that you're enjoying it is already the best uh, sort of praise we can get, uh, but from a writing perspective, yeah, the the beginning of the story and the beginning of the series, it was obviously more focused on introducing some of those characters, you know, like obviously our main character, Kaede, it's always going to be about him. It's that he's still the core character of the story. I think I said that in the previous uh, interview is that while we feature all the characters of Last Blade, the core central premise of this story and what we're following is still Kaede's journey uh, to get revenge uh, with, with his brother Moria, right? And also just the family drama of him with Yuki, et cetera. That's always been the focus. So, you know, the first season, the first 12 episodes, that arc was really dedicated to introducing the side characters too, like Akari, Juzo, and being more, putting them more as like comic relief, right? Uh, Mm -hmm. But also trying to, uh, one of the challenges I've tried to do in this following season that I think uh, is a hint towards the future in in this particular arc that we're in, which is the Shikyo arc, uh, is that you'll get to really 
flesh out hopefully and read more into Akari and Juzo, how their relationship works a bit more, and also just see them in a bit more of a serious light since they've been such jokey kind of characters so far for the most part, right? Uh, so, so yeah, that was a very deliberate decision. And from an art perspective, uh, it's one of those things as well where the artists have just uh, really just putting their all into every single episode. And I think they've just gotten a better and better grasp of the characters and they're living it just what the readers are, you know, they're, they're, they're spending countless hours refining their craft. So that's why you're going to see like really amazing uh, action choreography in later episodes that are even that put the further, the previous episodes of shame <laughs> uh, oh, and yeah, cool. going to get better and better from here. Uh, that's uh, that's really cool. That's really exciting to hear. Um, and uh, in terms of, of story, as I said, it's really difficult to to make a story of, uh, of all these characters, especially yeah. the the last blade. So, uh, how much of you know, like um, creative freedom, did were you able to take, or how much is actually what you believe is is really canon or oh, close to canon? Of course, there's no such thing as canon. Uh, right. You know, like the Bible thing of the uh, of of the series, but like how much. Um, uh, you know, uh, lenience or how much creative freedom did you have with these stories? Yeah. So with SNK, it was every single aspect of the story was passed through SNK and approved by SNK. So, uh, you know, as far as the canon is concerned, there's a lot of elements of the canon that were conflicting in terms of obviously making a coherent story because you have at the end, like with, with any fighting game, as you know, Nabil, you'll have like five different ending or every character gets their own ending and there's mm -hmm. only one and ending like in KOF, for example, is it like how, how who's that? Is it is it actually is it Shermie's ending that's true or is it Keo's? Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah, same, same situations. So that was really interesting, and it brings up the challenge you talked about about how do you make a coherent story. So again, we bought we we really bought into uh, the core storyline of Kaede, Moria, and uh, Yuki being kind of like that's the main story. And and try, I tried my best with SNK. We tried our best to really weave in every other character into in, into it in a very natural way that still supported that main story arc, right? And still touched upon, of course, the internal character motivations of each character as much as we can in a 45 panel, you know, yeah. uh, 20 episode comic as it is right now. So, uh, you know, to answer your, to answer your question uh, on canon, I'm not sure where, where, we, where we'd stand, but I'd like to say that I, this is pretty key. This is probably the most canon representation of the, of the story so far. Oh, that's, that sounds that sounds good. Uh, and in, in terms of of story, now, clearly the first uh, the first season was the season one and season two. Both of them are actually an adaptation of the first game, right? So it's not like season one was the first game and season two is um, is the second game. But and as you said, a lot of a lot of the characters showed up. Uh, some of them, you know, like for example, uh, my favorite character, like my main when I play Last Blade, is actually Lee, who actually showed up. I like you know like uh, his I wouldn't say story arc, but like the a couple chapters where he appeared really would like to see more of him but again as i i understand that the focus is on the kaide uh, moria and yuki uh, like you have guys any chance or any any plans or any hopes that maybe these characters can can have their own like maybe like short stories or short series or something like that yeah i mean i would absolutely love to to tell the stories of every single character because i think like you said like one of my personal favorite characters is obviously and it's weird because we, he, he's quite featured in the story, but one of my favorite characters is Shigen. Uh, he's seen, cause he's so, he's in the game, he's perceived as just this big bulky, you know, Hulk, like Marvel vs. Capcom Hulk-esque character. Uh, but he actually has a really in-depth storyline, obviously with his like being locked away in stone by, uh, oh, I don't want to spoil it in case people yeah. are still, I won't spoil who locked him in stone, but it's, I think it's, we, we implied it pretty clear in the comic. Uh, he's locked in stone, obviously, for nearly a decade. He had a kid that was, you know, growing up while he was in this. So I thought his character arc was really interesting. And, like, uh, he had, like, the sense of existential ennui that was, like, so different from all the other characters. But, yeah, like, I there's so many ideas and so many arcs that I would love to take, like, Lee or love to take, uh, you know, Zentetsu as well. And it's one of those things where you have to just, like, balance out, like you said, against the main storyline, right? And that's... So right now, I guess no confirmation of doing this uh, of any side stories, but I would I would add, there's interest there. I absolutely would love to do that, and I have some really uh, I have some really interesting ideas. I would love to explore with particular characters like Agami and like his past, and uh, he, I think he's just a really compelling character. Cool, cool. Now, in terms of so season one was done, um, is is Tapas uh, happy with 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 the sales and the reception that uh, Last Blade has gotten? So the reception, we're utterly blown away by it. It's it's really honestly, it's uh we we just I'm personally every time I read a comment, uh, every time I see any sort of you know engagement on social media, et cetera, it, it makes all of our hearts swell, I think, as amongst the team. So we're really happy to see the fans engaging and you know, and the fans that are reading it really enjoy it. 
And, uh, you know, we can't speak too much to, to the actual performance of it, uh, but it, all the numbers are public, obviously. And uh, one thing I will say is that, you know, I would I, the more the more people that get on the comic, the better, of course. And we would love to see more and more readers, not just to, as, from a performance or sales standpoint, but from a, you know, uh, just from a reading and like from from a creative standpoint, we would love just to share the story with more people. So, yeah, that's probably the most I can get into depth with the with the performance. But we would love to, I get the, 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 the short and sweet of it is we'd love for some of the Neo Geo now uh, users to check, to check it out. I know there's already plenty checking it out. <laughs> well, they definitely should. Cause again, it's, it's really, it's truly really an incredible thing to honestly, I, it was the last thing I would think of like a few months ago that you, if someone says me, we're going to get uh, a last blade comic series in English, you know, I wouldn't even believe it because there was no game, like nothing talking about last blade. So just, it's really amazing. And, um, the fact that you guys were able to get, you know, all this great reception from a game that, you know, there hasn't been any new chapter for the game for, for, for years. So that actually shows that the reason people are checking it out is because it's actually a good quality uh, comic. And and I'm hoping that this is just the beginning for you guys with this NK, because there's a lot of, a lot of untapped potential in those, in those IPs, right? I mean, we have Fatal Fury oh. and you said this is, Fatal Fury is something that you would love to work oh, on, yeah. right? That's uh, Fatal Slashing of Fighters. Yeah, King of Fighters, of course. I mean, honestly, that's the thing we talked about last time in our previous interview. Everyone should go check that out. There should be like a little block pop up. Uh, but it's one of those things that with SNK, the the mythos and just the the personality that they've imbued into every single character is unbelievable, right? Uh, and I think that like all the stories, especially Fatal Fury story, are stories that like uh, I utterly adore. Um, and I think K- uh, Fatal Fury in particular obviously has like a lot of interesting angles with Terry and his father. It goes back. Lot of, lots of stories about dead fathers for some reason. That's okay. I hope. I hope they're okay. Uh, <laughs> but you know, it's it's interesting you speak of uh, of like uh, the last blade IP because that's something that we definitely considered and uh, we personally again it was the, the decision behind that choosing uh, last blade out of all the IP was uh, number one obviously like the we we felt the aesthetics really matched with with what readers at Tapas really enjoy just like samurai or something more East Asian influence but more than that uh, the story you know the story just was really uh just something that we felt like had a lot of drama had a lot of uh emotional resonance in terms of the characters going through their own journeys individually and how how they deal with the changes like kaede with his struggle you know not just against revenge but his struggle with his own powers and insecurity and somewhat imposter syndrome i'm trying to touch upon that briefly at least uh and it is it is one of the situations where we've been kind of blessed with all these new announcements about last play with obviously the neo geo pocket color release yes. right that that mm-hmm. was Great timing. Uh, not to say that that was planned, but it, <laughs> it was good timing. Uh, and uh, yeah, and then obviously all the uh, other news, like Samurai Showdown getting a last played character, getting Hibiki. They confirmed Hibiki at this point. Correct. As a fan, I'm I'm so happy that they chose Hibiki. Uh, that would have been my choice, by the way, from the get go. Is like definitely Hibiki, or maybe I I, I I'm glad that I'm just basically let's put it this way. I'm glad that they didn't end up going with Kaede because I do think that that there's so many other sword based characters that, you know, fight similar to Kaede. And Kaede is a great character. He's the main character, obviously. But I think Hibiki is so well-beloved thanks to, like, you know, CBS2 and all these other things. True. So kind of went off went off a tangent, but uh, I was curious what your thoughts were, too, on the on, what, on the characters that they chose. It actually is. It's I, I was I was thinking, like, when they announced it, well, before they announced the character, I, I was thinking about lore. I said, who's, yeah. ca- who, you know, who's the character who could be alive at that time? And I said, the only I, one is probably going to be uh, Okina, but maybe like a younger version of him. But he's not popular. I mean, it's not popular. He's not the one of the most popular characters, I would say, in Last Blade. So I was conflicted. I have no idea. But Hibiki makes sense, you know, <laughs> and it's good that they kind of like uh, not focus on the lore and make, you know, make sense of it, how they're there. So, yeah, Hibiki is quite a popular character, as you said, thanks to CVS too. Um but, but I don't think we're going to see her in the comic yet, right? Because so this is, she's she's on the second, she's from the second game. So, um, which brings me to another question. Uh, what are the plans of, uh, of uh, and this is maybe, I was going to leave this to the last question, but since, you know, talking about Hibiki, what are the chances of uh, season three with the uh, Last Blade 2 story? So it's kind of similar, you know, to the to to my previous answer, which is it really really depends on if people want more of this, they have to show up for it, right? We need, we really need the support. We need to see the groundswell of people around this, uh, and it's not just all sales. It's never about that. It's just it's also about the the amount of readers, obviously reading, et cetera. So you know that's going to really be the future in terms of uh, the collaboration in general with with SNK and Tapas will really be dependent on that. 
Uh, and not only that, obviously, like from a story angle perspective, we do have plenty. Of, I, there's some really cool ideas uh, that we want to explore that that are, you know, one thing with any sort of story when you're first doing it, when you're first adapting it is that you kind of have to obviously remain faithful and we're always going to remain faithful. But there's also some original twists that you, I think many readers will probably notice with this comic that they're, that really still pay homage. For example, like the scars on uh, Washizuka's cheek, for example, they, they explain those logic. They explain what happened there when the games never did, right? So there's mm-hmm. a lot of those elements that in Last Play 2, we would love to explore, including like who actually is, uh, who actually is the baby, you know, that grows into uh, the our, our final enemy, uh, being Setsuna in, in you know Last Blade Two. So there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, there are actually answers to those questions. We we do have those written down on paper. So it's really just a matter of again of like uh, readers showing up and making yeah. sure this is the Last Blade <laughs> itself. Well, well you hear it, guys. If you want more Last Blade. Check the link in the description. Read the chapters. You, you, if you again, if you didn't, you're really, really uh, missing out. Um, so let's talk a little bit about season one. Now it's been completed. What are some of the challenge challenges? You know, like uh, anything you can remember from the first season that maybe you were not sure of, or you didn't know, you didn't, uh, uh, you didn't think how fans are gonna are gonna react to it, or any any challenge, any like uh, memory from season one that really like comes up when you think about some of the, of the difficulties you had with the first season in terms of story. Yeah, I think with, I think with, uh, with season one in particular, the most challenging part was how many characters we had to introduce and juggle. Cause obviously we really needed to establish that trio of Akari, Juzo and Kaede while also introducing all the readers to Moria, to Yuki. It was that, I think that was just the biggest challenge is establishing all these characters and giving them all some like limelight, a little bit of limelight. Right. Uh, and one thing I think we really struggle with that, uh, that I'm still, I'm still really proud that we were able to accomplish was hinting towards a larger thread, a really coherent thread that once you read, let's say you read episode one t- today and you read all the way to, you get secret access to episode, uh, the final episode of the season, season 20 or episode 24, we really pride ourselves on setting up those little, you know, uh, plot points, especially in like episodes nine through 11 with Shigen to really tie into those final episodes. So like everything is really coherent and tied together. But a specific, a specific challenge that I uh, really had with the first was actually uh, with episode seven and eight, which were uh, the Lee Rekka and also Zentetsu arc really challenging because we only had two episodes, you know, allocated initially to like really explore those characters, which of course we'd love to explore more and more. And there's so much more, fiction that we would in, in a season three we would explore that uh but you know that i think cha- the challenge of the character like zentetsu is making him more kind of an anti-villain right uh because i think that's something that like a lot of people don't really understand maybe from playing the games that zentetsu not necessarily he's not a bad guy he's not a good guy but in this mm-hmm. in our comic he kind of acts as an antagonist to kaede he's not he's not really a positive force in kaede's journey so that mm-hmm. was like a real challenge was establishing his character while also making him you know really enigmatic compared to all the other people, but still have an impact. And I think that's something that I hope really resonated with the readers is that uh, we really tried our best in those two episodes to really personalize those characters and make their personality shine through. Those were very, uh, actually like very memorable episodes to me. And um, it's maybe because I, I really want to know more about these characters. We really want to see them. Uh, so what was, what was in there uh, was, was enough to want me to, to know more about them. But at the same time, it didn't really, uh, take you away from the main story. So it wasn't like any, like it wasn't, you know, these characters did not overstay their, their, their welcome, basically. That's great to hear. Yeah, I think that's, uh, everyone's in a fighting game, especially they're all fighting for your attention. So <laughs> I, think every, I think every character, uh, you know, every, every character deserves their own. I think every character deserves their own 24 episode series, if not more. But uh, as you know, like, I think that's kind of the challenge with any adaptations, picking and choosing where where you can really, embellish and where you can really explore and focusing again on like what's your core story here <laughs> so uh, and one thing in, in season one there's a lot of um, there's a lot of funny moments a lot of serious moments uh, so how difficult was it to balance the comedy and you know the the serious heavy stuff you know one of the characters i really love that uh you see a bit more of in season two is actually uh our, our one and only okina who you mentioned earlier the old uh, wise turtle sage who kind of acts as like the like the teacher to Kaede, um, at least in the middle half of the series. Uh, I think he was just like Akari and Juzo. He kind of acts like that much needed comic relief, right? Because one thing that is really important uh, in any sort of story, to me at least, is uh, making sure that all the care that there is a there is a range of emotions that the reader is experiencing. So 
happiness, you know, sadness, humor, humor in particular, I think is a really powerful tool to, to really uh, kind of do a palate cleanse because obviously so much of the story is super serious. Kaede's journey, he's struggling internally with himself and his internal emotions, obviously towards his brother, towards his father, uh, towards his sister and how his family's kind of been torn apart for five years, you know? So that on a conceptual level is already incredibly intense. <laughs> and the first, the first episode is really intense uh, of last blade, obviously. So, you know, I think that, is a really a perennial challenge. And one thing that I'm really keeping in mind as we polish up these final few episodes, is like making sure that it's not, you know, as everything comes to, to comes to a close, it's all, not all just like constant sorrow or constant dread, you know, anything like that. So they, cool. I'm glad that I hope, I hope it's been working out for you so far. I hope the balance has been there. No, it's, 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 it's really working. As I said, it just uh, felt, uh, I felt like a, um, a gradual shift into, you know, how serious the situation is. These last few chapters, you know, that they're more serious than the, the first ones is, you know, you still have those comedic moments, which is fine, but they actually, it, it's really quite balanced. I, I, I do like that. And it's going to make sense that we're getting into the, at the end of this, you know, um, of the season and things are, you know, wrapping up. So it kind of makes sense that it's a little bit more serious than when it started. And I'm, you know, definitely uh, fine with that. It's, it's really the whole thing feels organic, which is, which is great. Awesome. Thank you. That, that's great to hear. Um, now season, um, uh, what, what can you tell us about, about season two? Like what, uh, oh, the, the remaining uh, few chapters, what can we expect? So right now we're currently on episode 15. So we're right, right smack dab in the middle of, uh, of the Shikyo arc, which it's care. If people don't know, Shikyo is kind of like this, uh, and again, I don't want to go too deep into spoilers to ruin it for you guys, but Shikyo is this like character who has like, it's pretty infamous as like the freak fighter of the last blade cast. <laughs> he's the, he's the, he's the weird guy that licks his blades if, if you need a, uh, visual imagery. So, uh, I, I, I've been really, really happy with how that arc's been turning out. It's gotten a, it's gotten us all a chance as a team to deliver a horror experience a little bit. Like, I think you'll find that these chapters are mm-hmm. quite a bit like a murder mystery, which I thought was really fun. And it was, it was one of the, one of my favorite, actually probably some of my favorite episodes of right was, was this arc just because of how, you know, uh, fun it was to balance Washizuka's story. Who's the super kind of the super intimidating, uh, really stoic character mm-hmm. against obviously, uh, uh, our other characters like Akari and Juzo. And I thought that that dynamic was really working well. So yeah, I really recommend people checking out this chapter. It's one of my favorite arcs in the entire series, uh, if not easily my favorite arc so far in the series. Uh, so yeah, really, that that's definitely gonna, that carries on a little bit longer in the story. And then after that, we really dive right back into the main story, uh, which is Kaede and Moria. So you're going to see a lot more Moria this time. Uh, and I think that's something that we've intentionally kept secret. We really tried to only give you little hints and pieces of Moria's personality uh, and his true personality and his true character shining through and really build up, you know, towards whether the que- the biggest question is why or, or whether he did kill, you know, uh, his father. So if you play the games, obviously it's like a, it's not the best kept secret, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I think that's something that's also really interesting uh, that we could talk about too, is that uh, when, when writing something like this is trying to build up that mystery, uh, even though your audience probably knows the twist. Yeah. <laughs> Right. So I think that I think that's kind of like the most uh, that's one of the most compelling parts of writing. And one of the biggest challenges of writing the series is still making it engaging. And uh, I'll say this right now is that everything has been approved by SNK, but there have been changes to the story. So you may think, you know, you may think, oh, you know, OK, you know, it might, it might that's, be that's, that's interesting. <laughs> might be. I think it'll be much different than what people think. Let's put it that way. Oh, cool. 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 Exciting. Can't wait to, to see that. Uh, now, when, when you guys designed, when you designed the, these two, um, two seasons, is it the idea is, I mean, is this going to be like a complete story or is it going to still leave things open for a potential, um, third season? So this is, uh, so seasons one and two are adapting obviously last blade one, right? So there's definitely more story there it, it, with a season three, there would definitely be a lot more to explore in terms of just the, I won't go into the story too too much in detail, obviously, but there there's a whole other story arc that we'd explore, uh, and and involving Setsuna and and uh, our, our our favorite character, the Owl of Setsuna. Uh, but yeah, so there, there's a lot more to explore on that angle, and you know, um, I would say that in general, there's even aspirations beyond you know what what the games have told in terms of ideas we have. There's ideas we've discussed with SNK, so there's a lot that go you know that continue the story of Last Blade. Uh, so there are a lot of ideas for how, where that would go and, uh, can't go into any details on that, but it's just really, it, it is a lot of interesting ideas that we have discussed in terms of 
where we can explore the characters and how they would grow, you know. I, I think it's definitely be amazing if you guys, you know, if, if, if things work out and you guys do the, the Last Blade 2 adaptation, but you don't stop there and you keep going because there's so much, I believe, this, this um, you know, the, this IP has so much potential, but unfortunately yeah. it was only told over two games, you know, unlike Samurai Shodown or King of Fighters or Fatal Fury. So there's a lot of end up potential in there and it'll be really great if you guys can, if things work out and you can actually continue and make this, uh, you know, uh, make the series go on and live on for, for longer. I would love to make a, our own Last Blade 3, let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> that's a dream. That would be a dream of, amongst a dream. It's already been a dream, but that'd be a dream in a dream. It's like Inception style. <laughs> it's a dream in a dream, but it really, like, yeah, there, there's so many ideas. And like you said, I think that's what's uh, so tragic about the Last Blade series as, as an actual video game series. I mean, obviously, SK, they've been doing an amazing job supporting it. And I'm sure there's aspirations on their end to also uh, adapt this further. But like you said, it, there was only two main games. That's that's it. That's really nothing compared to any, like even Art of Fighting got three games, you know? <laughs> like, exactly, uh, yeah. like all these other game series, uh, uh, it essentially has the same amount of titles that King of the Monsters had. So, <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, come on. And there's there's a lot more story here to explore. And there's a lot more dynamics, I think, between Kaede and Moria that don't just end in Last Blade 1 or 2. Um, very neatly. At least if I were, you know, at least if we were designing the story the way we are with the comic, uh, there's some definitely some interesting angles we can go. And I would love to down the line we could have a maybe a follow up uh, some some tire sometime in the far flung future. Depending on how the future turns out, we could talk about that one day. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. Now, uh, you know, the, the last blade is obviously using the um, I would still call it the new like webtoon format, which is uh, honestly I didn't know about this until like last year. With the, there was a King of Fighters webtoon that unfortunately was canceled, um, yeah. uh, but uh, it's actually a pretty interesting format because it kind of looks like like uh, you know basically uh, um, an anime put into a comic. But at the same time, there's still some people who are not, you know, who not, not, I wouldn't say not into this format, but they're not, haven't been introduced to this format. Some people are still kind of old school. So is there any possibility or any plans for the series to be printed in a, you know, uh, you know, like a traditional uh, format, comic format? We would love to, and we are actively looking to make those, to make that happen. So I'll say that is that we're working towards trying to make that happen. Uh, right now, so stay tuned. Uh, I, That'll be really great. So, have you have you guys done it before? With with like, is there like any other tap pass webtoon that actually turned into a, a you know like a comic format later on? Uh, yeah, no, there's there's plenty of there. Uh, recently, people can. This is actually a public deal, so I could talk about it. Recently, we announced, for example, one of our biggest originals, Magical Boy, is being printed with Scholastic. Right, we have a partnership with Scholastic, which is one of the biggest publishers in the U.S. Uh, so yeah, we they, they're taking that from a vertical scroll and turning that into a page format. So it happens all the time. It's usually much easier to transfer a page format into vertical scroll, we find, just from working on many, many comics. Uh, so it is a bigger, bigger challenge to transfer a vertical scroll. That, that's something that was made with that in mind to traditional page format. But uh, yeah, I mean, with Last Blades, uh, definitely one of the titles that we're really working hard to, to, to right. try and make that happen. But obviously, it's really dependent, of course, on the performance of the webcomic itself, too. Of so course, that's what I really want to I'm really, really hoping that that would happen. I mean, I, I do enjoy uh, reading, you know, with uh, on, on my phone or tablet, but I also like to have this, you know, like things like physical form. They yeah. always, uh, that's, 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 that'll be great to have this, this series. And hopefully, as I said, hopefully this is, this is not the last of last blade right this is just the beginning for more stories from you guys and uh, i'm really hoping that you'll get to work on more snk ips there's a lot of missed potential there you know like uh we you know talk before recording the interview uh how you know this this would love to see like fatal fury king of fighters metal slug all these great uh, great uh, ips that definitely need proper adaptations yeah especially metal slug i think there's a lot of story there that people don't even really understand when they're playing the game and it's one of those, again, it just goes back to SNK and uh, that, that really a testament to their designers is just how much personality they put into every single sprite, especially Metal Slug with all the, you know, uh, emphatic characters. Uh, I feel like there's there's actually quite a quite a bit of story there in terms of Morden and, uh, and uh, the, the Peregrine Falcons. I would love to explore that personally. Um, so that's definitely a story that in particular I would really, really enjoy. I'm a huge Metal Slug fan myself. I, uh, I was saying earlier, if I turn off my green screen, you'd probably see like some of the some of the stuff in the background, like the like a PGM I've been playing or my my Omega MBS. So, uh, oh, one of cool. These, one of these days we'll have a tournament to build. One of these days, uh, <laughs> maybe last maybe last play tournament. Um, 
but yeah, it'd be, it'd be it'd, like you said, it'd be great just to see S and K just further, you know, ex- as a fan myself, just further expanding themselves into different mediums, whether it be web comics, animation. Obviously, we've all seen a few of their anime, I'm sure, at this point. Uh, and I think Last Blade would be awesome as an anime. I'd love to see that putting that out there. <laughs> I would, I would love for this to be to be adapted into an animation format. So you never know, right? Hopefully. And you're right. Vertical scroll very much em- uh, really emulates kind of that more anime or more cinematic kind of pacing in terms of not even just the flow of the images, but also the illustrations, the rendering of them. It really just feels like screenshots, right? That's exactly. Try- yes. That's exactly try- what it feels like. Yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully, hopefully that happens. So. You heard it here, guys. So if, you, if you want more Last Blade, if you want Metal Slug One Day or Fatal Fury on Tapas, then show your support. The link is in the description. This is a great, great uh, comic. Uh, one last question, uh, Hayden. Can you tell us, can you give us, you know, tell uh, the fans, um, you know, like uh, what should they what should they expect from the, the end of the story and what are your, your message to, to the fans of Last Blade? So my first, you know, message to everyone is just thank you guys so much for the support so far. I mentioned it previously, but I it really even uh, any comments you guys even a like on the page, every everything you guys do really really uh just it's it's made us overwhelmingly happy and it's made it, it's made this final stretch as we finish up these final episodes easier, you know, because it is a challenging epic, especially uh with all the action scenes we have planned for you guys. Those are really challenging for the artists. So, I've uh, been sharing all of your guys' kind comments and all of your guys' uh uh, hopes for the future and all your guys' theories for the story. We've been sharing those and really thank, thank, just thank you. Thank you all again for, for all that. And, uh, you know, in terms of season two there, we, I'm just excited to, to finally reveal some of the big twists we've been building up towards since episode one, you know, uh, and, uh, really delving much deeper into how Kaede is feeling towards the end. Cause I think one journey that, you know, season one really established and we're still season two, just right. Episode 13 jumps right into it is just, Kaede's internal feelings towards his brother, but also his internal feelings about himself and his ability to, you know, be a warrior and be a swordsman. We see him in Last Blade confidently because we were controlling him. I'm sure uh, I'm not the best at Last Blade. I, I try my best to play it all the time, but uh, in the games, it's kind of deceptive because you're seeing this like fully grown, fully matured warrior who knows how to use a sword. But in the comics, I think we really tried hard in season one to establish that he's not actually that skilled. His dad mm-hmm. died like way through his training, right? Technically speaking. So, he had he he never got to the point to where he ever got the admiration of his father or or and really was admiring his brother. So you so you I, I hope that that's something that comes across in this final arc is uh, hopefully as he he becomes a little bit more confident and he becomes more of the person that we see obviously with his yellow hair uh, yeah. without maybe being awakened. So I think that's really what's what what we're aiming for is trying to make sure that Kaede, uh, you know, Kaede is confident. We just want him to be happy with himself. <laughs> that's that's one of my biggest goals with, with season two. I want him to be happy finally. Uh, so, so yeah. Uh, and then again, yeah, th- thank you guys so much. And thank you to bill for, for making this happen as usual. It's uh, it's been a dream come true. Well, thank you. And I'm, I'm hoping we'll, uh, we'll do this again after the, the end of season two, so we can talk, uh, without, you know, being afraid to spoil anything about the yes. entire <laughs> series. And hopefully by then we'll hear some good news from you guys about a potential third season. So again, Hayden, thank you so much for, for being here. Thank you for telling us uh, about the last blade. Again, those of you who have not checked the uh, the web comic, it, the link is in the description below. You definitely should check it out. Thank you so much, Hayden. Thank you. Bye, everyone. I hope you guys enjoyed this video from Neo Geo Now. Now, don't forget to like and subscribe if you have not done so. And I would like to take this opportunity and thank my patrons for supporting the channel and making this content possible. Making daily videos and especially the documentaries and lore episodes takes a very long time and a lot of effort, and being able to get some support for these time-consuming tasks allow me to keep going and strive for more and better content. With that said, I want to give a big special shout out to Michael, Brian Yard, Fahad Aswadi, Heinz Green 3, SSBM Slick Tricks, Jacques Paul, and Ken Suenaga as well as special thanks to Shaka Asamiya, Refugio Robles, Felipe Gumara, Jihao Ju, Gil Sal, Muhammad Al Blushi, Anthony Longino, and Bernd Ritnas. 
those of you who are not yet Neo Geo Now patrons, I hope you will check my Patreon page where you can become patrons, helping the channel produce more videos, as well as receive special perks that are exclusive to patrons, like early access to videos, exclusive making offs, and other SNK digital goodies. Link for the Neo Geo Patreon page is in the description below. So until next time, thank you for watching.